everyone. This is Becky Nyron. I'm coming to you live with the Veterans Breakfast Club with the Veterans History Project that we're doing an interview today with Corey Morning. He served with the United States Army and I'm going to ask him some questions and he's just going to tell us a little bit about his Army career. How are you today, Corey? I'm good. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing very well. The sun's shining, so I can't complain on a yeah. cold, cold day in December. Oh, yes. Um, so Her. why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your name, when you enlisted, and maybe what caused you to enlist in the first place? Uh, I think about that all the time. There's a, a lot of things, that, a lot of reasons why I joined the military. A lot of reasons. Um, my name's Corey. Robert Morning. Uh, let's see. Um, I was raised in New Jersey, born in Orange, New Jersey. And um, I decided um, what inspired me to join the military was uh, the movie Top Gun and um, Desert Storm and Colin Powell, seeing the tanks and the commercials and things like that. And then also reading about the things that, you know, the men and women from in history, you know, reading about that in history. And then, you know, I always felt like I wanted to be a part of it, I wanted to be a part of, of, of history. I wanted to do something, you know, be a part of it. So I decided to, uh, to join the military. Um, didn't like school, didn't want to go to college, uh, decided to, uh, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I was like, I'll join the military. So I initially I wanted to be an Air Force pilot. So I was going to join the Air Force. Didn't do that. Then I went into, I wanted to be a Marine. So I full metal jacket. Nah, nah, I don't want to do that. So then I was like, all right, well, I'll join the Navy. And I was like, no, I don't want to die on the water. So I joined, I, then I joined the Army. So the Army yeah. was actually kind of down a little bit on your list. Yeah. Yeah, because I was I had friends that was going in prior to to me graduating high school, mm -hmm. and so I was kind of like making my decision based off of that. And so when I, I towards like towards the end of my junior year, I was like, you know, I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to do that. Like what I wanted to do, I couldn't do because at the time they wasn't taking um, military um, and recruits who wore glasses because I used to wear glasses. Okay. So, I couldn't be a pilot. So I was like, all right, well, I'll do something else. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to be on the water. So I decided to join the army. Okay. And, and what was, year was that? That was in 2001. Okay. I left two weeks after I graduated high school. I was 17 years old. So right before September 11th happened, right? When September 11th happened, I was in basic training at Fort Knox. We was actually on the familiarization range for the M16, we had just got finished doing um, class work where we was uh, learning about the weapon, learning about the rifle, uh, putting it together, you know, loading, unloading, um, hot gun, cold gun, and stuff like that. So then we, the next day we went to the range. So and that was September 11th and we got to get familiar with shooting the rifle, how it feels. And then it was early. They told us to break for lunch. And it was early, it was like, what's going on? So we all went to the designated area and the drill sergeant started walking up. We all trying to trade in our pokey bait because we're not allowed to have it. So he's like, oh, let me get the M&Ms. Let me get your Skittles and stuff like that. So I was like, I ain't giving my stuff away. Next thing you know, the drill sergeants come walking to our um, area and they say, <clears throat> and they tell us that we got bad news. You know, the, uh, the Twin Towers in New York uh, have been hit by a plane. And everybody's just like, what? Yeah. First question that was asked after the drill sergeant said everything that happened was, are we, are we going to war? Are we getting fast tracked? Are we, are we going straight to our companies? The drill sergeants didn't know at the time. And they told us, you know, if, if you get fast tracked, then you, you'll just have to learn everything at your unit. And if not, then you'll continue on with, with training. And we didn't get fast tracked. We didn't graduate early. We didn't get pushed to our unit. We just graduated early. I mean, we graduated on time. On time. So was March of 2004 your first deployment? Yes, it was. Okay. It was. That was the and first time over there. 
And that's actually how we met. I just want to kind of segue into that. Um, my husband, Staff Sergeant Nathaniel Nyron, served with you, and I met you at Fort Hood when you were preparing for your deployment. Yes, because uh, your husband showed up to us uh, right when we were getting ready to deploy. And he, uh, they put, they put Sergeant Nyron in in our company and put him in our platoon. We was actually short um, a pers uh, personnel. And so they put him in, in our platoon and he fit right in, fit right in. It was, okay. it was a joy. I, I miss him so much. Yeah, he, he, it's, it's hard to believe, you know, that, that the anniversary date's coming up. But, um, but I was glad he served with guys like you because I remember talking to him and, and you guys were all he talked about, his brothers. And mm -hmm. um, so why don't you... Tell, tell us a little bit about your deployment, because I know that we don't have a lot of um, involvement in the Veterans Breakfast Club with Iraq War veterans. And, and I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more, as I'm sure a lot of the viewers would like. Okay. Um, well, it, was, it was hot. Definitely hot. Um, it was, it was very, it was, it was surreal when when I got there. Um, it to me, um it felt when when I when I got to talk to my mom and I and and we got to our um our sector that we was going to be patrolling and, and in charge of and we we're voting we we're riding down the um the streets and stuff like that. It it was it 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 was it it was it reminded me of being back in America. And the reason why I say that is because it was just license going on, mm -hmm. you know, streets and, you know, it was like, I'm looking at, you know, cars on the side of the road and, and you know, shops and businesses. And it was like, although it's visually different, I'm like, this is like home, you know, I'm, I'm in another person's country. I'm all these movies and things I read about history. I'm one of these guys riding through these, these, this, this country and it was it was surreal it was very surreal I, I, I was I was scared out of my mind I'm how old was I I was 20 years old scared out of my mind I was still still a young kid and uh, I remember one of the other sergeants from first platoon we was we was on uh, fire guard he was in Kuwait this was before we actually pushed north to go to Baghdad and uh, it was it was the night before we were supposed to leave and I was on fire guard, which is we were watching the the weapons and um, make sure that you know we don't get attacked and nobody steals anything while everybody else is asleep. So we, we run shifts. And, um, and I asked I asked I asked the other NCO. I said I said, hey, son. I was like, are are you scared? You know, I'm 20 years old. This guy, he's a staff sergeant. I'm still I'm still a private. This is his first tour. This is my first tour. You know, he's like 20 something, like 30 something years old. I'm 20 years old. And there's just a lot of age and gap difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of people who, you know, when we first went over there, it was almost everybody who went over there. It was like their first tour, almost everybody. So it was, it was, it was surreal. And where and did they send you, Corey? To Baghdad. Okay. Um, I can't remember the town uh, because of the accident um there's um, a lot i think i remember nate saying the aldora oil refinery yes okay. the oil we were tasked to guard the oil, oil refinery and uh had like other follow-on missions where we would you know listen to you know the prayer calls and things like that because they were sending um propaganda through the prayer calls and so we had to you know go sit and listen to that so it was uh it was it was a lot of waiting around a lot of riding around a lot of getting attacked and shot at and um which you guys saw on the news and things like that it was long missions long nights it was it was fun and and scary you know for how long were you there how long were we there about 12 13 months okay and did you get um an opportunity to have leave during that time 
Yes, they gave everybody leave during that time. I had uh, two weeks of, uh, they call it R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I came home, got to spend my birthday with my twin sister um, early. And then when we got back, um, they had to, it was, the airs were black, the roads was black. I had to wait three days. It was, it was a big, big gunfight, big firefight. It was, it was almost like the wind, when they described, when I got back with my platoon, they described it and said it was, it was almost, it was like Black Hawk Down. Like they, I didn't get to see it. It was a big, big gun, big firefight. A lot of, a lot of things happened that day. My, uh, one of my friends died on, on, uh, on my birthday that day. I was still stuck waiting for them to come pick me up. Uh, Travis Babbitt. Yes. Special, specialist Travis Babbitt died on my birthday. Turned 21, you know, so I was happy to have been able to spend that with my twin sister. But, you know, getting back to work and things was happening and not being able to be there with your friends, your boys, your, you know, your brothers, mm -hmm. it was like, uh, you know, it was a bad. It was it was a bad three days. It was it went on for three days. I was stuck at uh, battalion because we was living in different places. So I was mm -hmm. stuck actually brigade, uh, Camp Liberty, and I was stuck at Camp Liberty for three days waiting for the uh, the firefight to die down. Kind of almost I, made you feel helpless, right? I was I felt very helpless. Yeah. You know my boys out there, my brothers, the whole he the the colonel activated the whole base. When, um, when, when, when the attack happened, every vehicle that can roll, every soldier that could pick up a weapon was was out fighting that those three days, and luck. I was lucky enough to to miss it, which I'm very grateful and appreciative of. But you know, my brothers was there, and you know, we don't we don't want nothing to happen to us or 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 each other. But it's like we got a job to do, so we did it. And you did it very well. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. I had a group of guys with me, um, right next to me. I missed them. So tell us a little bit more later about your deployment. Um, do you want to share anything about the accident or we can skip that? We can, you know, move forward. No, we, we could talk about the accident if you if you don't mind. I, I don't I, really. I, I would actually love to hear it, Corey. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, that 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 time, like this time of year, is very hard for me. Um, I always get very sad. I spend a lot of time in the shower crying, to be honest. Um, so that day, um, I think not, Nate was asleep. I was on guard. Um, a lot of us were on guard that when, when we had to go take the vehicles in that day, the XO called us and said that we have to bring vehicles in to dispatch the vehicles. So we was like, okay, we don't have nobody to do this. He wants us to bring it in. So, uh, so we was like, okay, so we, we spun up a patrol. We didn't have nobody and we are going to bring the vehicles in to get them dispatched. So we're going in to get them dispatched. We take the normal route that we take and we go to Four Corners intersection. The Four Corners intersection is dangerous because it's, it's a, a lot happens over there. And um, it was early in the morning, the sun was just coming up. Um, I just got off of guard. Most of us just got off of guard. Some at the gate, I was on the rooftop. And so we were all very tired. Um, the, the ones who drove was the ones who slept all night. So Nate, Nate drove and I wanted the gun. I was tired. I was like, I'd rather be on the gun. Um, the other guy, Blanchett, he wanted to TC. Like on that truck, on our truck, we all wanted to do something different because for the whole year, we, were, we all had a specific job. So we was like, oh, Nate wanted to drive. And I was like, yeah, well, I want a gun. And the gunner was like, well, I want a TC. So that's how the position switched that, that day. Uh, Cause I was supposed to be driving. Um, the TC was supposed to be gunning and Nate was supposed to be the truck commander, the TC. So we all switched positions. So we get in um, our vehicles, the lead vehicle. We only were rolling with three vehicles that that deployment, 
and we were short handed. So we had three vehicles to roll with. So we made it work. It was difficult, but we made it work. Um, now I'm the gunner, the gunner's position, job and all that stuff. We have to wash our sectors of fire. So me being in a Leo vehicle, I'm in charge of from left to right. That's what I'm in charge of. I'm watching everything coming forward and going from left to right. And then everybody else, or the other gunners behind me are, are watching immediate left or immediate right. And then the last vehicle is only looking behind us. He doesn't see anything else. So it's up to the gunners to pull that security. So we only had three, um, three vehicles pulling security. So one looking forward, the rear vehicle looking to the rear and the middle vehicle, he switches from left to right every five minutes or 10 minutes. At that time, he was looking over the right. There was a vehicle coming from the left when we was approaching for the Four Corners intersection. And I saw the vehicle. So I'm on the gun. I see the vehicle. I didn't say anything because the vehicle was about a football field and a half, maybe two football field fields. I can't, I'm, I, it's, it's hard for me to remember because um, I lost my memory, my short-term memory during the accident. But I see, I saw the vehicle coming, and so I, I, I took the gun and I traversed over onto onto the vehicle, and I picked up the the the, the machine gun to show that show of force. We have to show escalation of force. So I pick up the weapon to show that that I see him, and he's still a ways away. So. I'm looking on my peripheral vision and I see that we're, we're almost through the intersection. Nate is almost through the intersection. So when I see that we're, when, when the nose of the Humvee is about to hit the other side of the street, I start traversing over the front. When I start traversing over the front, the vehicle still looks to me like it's yards away. I mean, yards away. Mm -hmm. like. Just, it, it did not look close to me. So I traverse back over the front because I have to pull front security. When I pull back over the front, I see, and this is the last thing I see. I think about this every day. It's not a day that, a time during the day for since that accident that I don't think about that day. I think about it every day. It's so hard to live with. Um, but I traverse back over the front and that's the last thing I remember. And I wake up in the hospital and they tell me that Nate's dead, Blanchette's downstairs. I lost my memory. I broke my ankle. I'm like, what the hell happened? Right. I didn't even know what was going on. I wake up in, in the hospital. There's a Marine laying next to me. He's watching uh, Jerry Springer or Maury. I don't know what the hell he was watching, but I'm scared out my mind. Right. And I'm nurse! And she comes running in and she tells me what happened. My foot's up in a cast. And I'm like, what the hell happened? I, I didn't wake up until the next day. Okay. And when I woke up, every, everybody came. Well, half of my platoon came. And I, I remember this because this is funny to me. But when they came, they all lined up. It was uh, Uresti, Armstrong, Young, um, Sergeant Everett, the Lieutenant, um, Jones. And Preciado, they came. I think I think Preciado came, but I went. They was all lined up in front of me, and I said, "Hey, I call." I said hi to. I only got through half of them mm -hmm. to say hi to them, and I said each one of their names. I said, "Hey, hey, hey, young, hey, strong, hey, Anthony, you know, hey, young." I said all that, and then when I got to the, like to the middle, I was like. Hey, when y'all get here, they called me 10 second Corey for like two weeks. Because I couldn't because of, of the short term memory loss. Yeah, I still have um, short term memory loss and I'm still dealing with that. Okay. But that uh, that's what happened that day. Um, I remember when um, Garnett, he was our medic. I remember when Doc came to check us. Um, he told me what happened when he had to come check all of us. And he said that he went to Nate first and he, he just, he, he said he's gone and went to me and Sean immediately. And, and I, I'll say when he told me the story, I, I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. It's hard. 
it's still hard. Um, but he said he came when 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 he when he knew there was nothing he could do for Nate. Um, he came and checked on the on me and Blanchette, and my ankle was broke. Uh, he grabbed my ankle. And he had to check for responsiveness. And he said, he said, when I grabbed my ankle and I woke up screaming, he was like, he's good, he's fine. He went to go check my debt. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you were aware. I was aware. Yeah. So he was like, good, he's fine. I'll get to him. Let me, let me go check Blanchette. And he checked Blanchette. Blanchette needed to be um treated uh more than me. I just had I landed on my head. What they said was I landed on my head. Everything else that I say. After I, I woke, after the truck got hit, is what everybody told me. Because okay. all I remember is seeing the car, looking over the front, and waking up in the hospital. I don't remember anything else that I'm about to say. Okay. This is what my platoon told me. So my best friend, uh, especially, well, Sergeant Anthony Young, he, uh, he was on the, he was on the rear vehicle. He was the gunner. And uh, he told me that it took them a long time to get him to stand back up. He was crying. Well, not that long, but it took them a while to get him to stand up. He told me that he he it, it, it hurt him and that, you know, once he knew that I was OK, he uh, he 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 was able to, to get up and, and, you know, do his job, which which didn't take that long. Right. I don't know. I was knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is what they tell me that happened. The vehicle hit us at the um, the rear of the driver's side, and when he hit us, he had to have been he had to have sped up. They say about eighty miles an hour because yeah. we go uh, our max is about forty five miles an hour. So we was at max speed. So they had to have sped up and have gone about 80, 85 miles an hour to, to hit us. And what happened when he hit us was it, he, he hit here and our, from what I was told, the Humvee spun and spun around three times and the wheels locked at some point and then rolled three times. And at some point during the rollover of uh, the radio mount dislodged, um, I asked Blanchette, I said, did I do anything that I was supposed to do that I was trained to do? Because I, all I remember is waking up in the hospital. Did I do my job? Did I jump down and grab the radio mount that we're like we're trained to do during a rollover? I don't remember anything. I don't remember getting tossed around in the vehicle. Um, they say that what might have happened with my ankle was the radio mount when it dislodged. Um, it it got my foot got caught somehow, maybe getting eject when I got ejected out the gunner's hatch um it got caught in the in the rope uh the the gunner's uh, uh strap um, what is it it was the thing that we would sit on seat I don't remember what it was. um but that got dislodged it's just they they think that um as the radio was getting dislodged and bouncing around that's what hit uh Nate mm -hmm. so um so he he must have went right away if that hit him. Um I, was, I don't know. Um yeah, that's, what, that's what I was told. Yeah, that's what I was told too. So I, I don't want to go too graphic. No, no I <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um it's hard for me. Um so and Blanchette, he he told me that he got ejected out of the TV's hatch and he when he got out, I guess as the truck was rolling over, as he was getting tossed out of the the the, the TC's door, the pat the driver the TC side door, he got ejected out of his door. And I guess as the truck was rolling over, it hit him in the chin and it hit him in his plate, in his chest plate, his uh, bulletproof uh, plate. And what it did was it sits like this and it bowed in. And uh, he was wearing his wedding ring, and his wedding ring is what stopped the plate from crushing his sternum, wow. and that's how he survived. And if that, if he wasn't wearing that, most likely I probably would have been the only one that survived on the truck, because I don't even know how I survived. Because they said that when I got ejected, I went from what they told me it was three stories high, 
And when I came down, I came straight down my head first and I landed in a pile of trash wow. is what they, and they said that uh, if I wasn't wearing my helmet and I didn't land in that trash, I probably would have died from impact. Right. And I got ear concussion, 10% of short, ten percent of my short-term memory was lost. And uh, I had a hairline fracture on my ankle. Now, after that, did they, were you sent home or was that deployment over for you at that time? The deployment wasn't over for me. Um, I didn't go on any more missions after that. Um, but the deployment wasn't over for me. Um, they told me if I didn't get better in the 24 hours that I got better, they were going to send me to Germany. But because I woke up, they, um, and we were getting ready to redeploy about a month later. We, we was, we came home in what, February? And that, um, that, because okay. it happened December 28th. And we, we came home about March. Was it March? I think, or, I think early March. I think you started your departure in February and made it home early March. Does that sound right? Yeah, that does sound right. Okay. That does sound right because we was there for a, a couple, like four more months. We was there, there two months more in country and then two months in Kuwait before we left. Okay. And um, was that the only time you were deployed? No, I was deployed three more times. Okay. I, uh, 06, 08 was the deployment I went. Um, and then 2009 and my last tour in 2011. This shirt right here is from my 06 my second deployment, we were leaving a mission. Uh, we was we was uh, doing a mission. We had the cord on cord. On, uh, we had to check this whole town basically. So we 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 locked down the whole town, and my platoon was tasked with watching the back of the town. Nobody in, nobody out. So from two o'clock in the morning till eleven o'clock in the morning, I'm laying in the woods in the grass all night, waiting for to try and hop over the wall or run and get into the, the, the town. Bugs and spiders and everything just crawling all over me. We rotate and sleep, asking if everybody's good. And it was nothing, nothing happened. It was pretty boring and cold. It was really cold. Were all your deployments in Baghdad or Iraq or? Um, my last deployment was just south of Saddam's hometown. I think it was just south of Tikrit. I can't remember the name of the town. That was that was my only deployment that I wasn't in Baghdad. And what were your homecomings like after having been gone for so long? My homecomings were great. The first one was, was awesome. It felt like a the the families and 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 first calf, you know, they they really made us feel like we were really real heroes. I mean we are. Yeah. I know, but to, for most of us, like with me, it's like, that's my job. Like, you know, this is your, your job now. You, you, you do interviews or whatever else your job is. Everybody has a job, you know, they get up every day. So for like a lot of us, it was, this was my job. So, you know, when people thank me, people thank me all the time when I mention that I'm, I'm a veteran and things like that. And I just say, you know, thank you for your support. You're welcome. So, but I just don't see it like that. I did my job. I had a job. I signed up to do a job and I did it. And that's how I feel. That's great. Um, is there anything else you want to share? Do you want to bring your oh, daughter in to say hi? I have a lot that I would love to share, but it's because of the accident. It's hard for me to remember things. I mean, I, I remember Mac, we, you know, we had McDonald. He, he um, passed away on our second tour the truck got hit with an IED and uh, he, uh, he, uh, he ended up taking his, his own life, I believe, um, due to the injuries and, and things like that because of the IED. So it was, it was, a, it was sad. Yeah. Very sad. And he was funny. Um, I remember um, we were going on this and this was in 2004, my big, the, the, the my first tour we had, the colonel and the commander, everybody was coming to do this. It was a big battalion mission. The colonel commander were coming to the oil refinery. We were staging at the oil refinery. We were gonna leave there. 
Um, and I remember Pozella, he was not feeling well. He was sick. He didn't want to do anything. So he was like, he, he didn't want to go. And I was like, look, you, you got to go. I don't feel well either. I'm sick too. Like I, I had a cold. I was sick. Like you, you don't get no, no, no days off. Like if you are, if you're bedridden, then you're, you're not working. But if you can put your boots on, you can get up and you can work. And all you're doing is blowing your nose and sneezing and coughing. You, you could still work. Right. You don't need to be in the bed. You need to get out in that truck. Okay. So, and then that's what we were trying to tell Pozella. Pozella felt like he wanted to, to fight me. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just telling you to get on the truck. If you want to fight, we can fight. So make McDonald. Matt gets up and says, you're not going to fight nobody. He pushes him. And I'm just like, everybody comes in. And it, it was, it was, it was funny. It was one of the funniest moments, memories I have of McDonald, uh, other than when he, we had a night vision um, mission. We had to wear our night vision goggles. And um, I see Matt walking and we're walking through this field and we ended up walking through a farm where in this all these these rivets and wadis because of it, we're walking through a field and next thing you know you just see mac just going along going along and next thing you know you just see mac go like this what happened yeah <laughs> it was it was um so so many memories um i had a forrest gump moment while i was over there we we uh, we came across a um, uh, a house that they were constructing and it was locked up and the lieutenant was like well we got to see what's in there we're like sir they're building this house there's nothing in there and they're like look locked and he's like no we got to go in there and we're like well there's no one here to give a receipt to for cutting the lock like we can't just break into the house and he was like well we got to get in there I was like well there's no window I was like and I told the little LT I was like I could climb the wall so I could scale the wall and get into into the building and, I, and, and I'll look look in there for you. So he was like, yeah, you can. I was like, yeah, I'll Spider-Man it real quick. And he was like, all right. So the only way for me to scale that wall was to take off my vest. So I had to take off all my gear, leave my rifle. I went, I scaled the wall and I cleared the whole house with just my Kevlar and my nine mil and there was nothing in it. And I'm like, sir, I told you there was nothing in it. <laughs> So I had to come back down the wall. I had to climb through the window and I had to come back. That I had, that was my Forrest Gump moment. You know, remember in the movie where he he went and checked the hole? He took oh, off, yeah. Went in the hole. I call that my Forrest Gump moment. Good was, memories. Yeah. Um, but I think about I think about my time in service all the time. I think about all the guys, I think about 2004 and um, especially this time of year it's hard it starts around it starts on my birthday yeah. and this it gets it gets hard this time of year especially around christmas time usually around the anniversary of our accident is when i'm feeling a little better but for from my birthday up until the new year i'm pretty bummed out yeah it's uh it's, it's pretty hard um i cried the other day um, in the shower, and my daughter was like, "Are you okay?" I was like, "Yeah, I was, I was just crying." I was, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later, a couple of years from now. So, well, that's and, good. You have her for your support system. Oh yeah, she's great. Does Wonderful. she want to be introduced? Keisha, do you want to introduce yourself? We'd love to meet her. Come here. Come say hi <laughs> to America. Hi, America. <laughs> Hi, Keisha. It's a pleasure to meet you. You have a good dad there. Yeah, he's a handful. <laughs> I'm sure he says the same thing sometimes. There was one time where one his girl. There was one time where I was playing the game, trying to fix my Roblox, and then his girlfriend was washing the dishes, and then he woke up. I was like, Dad dad and then he woke them he was like wait we have to go get her and, uh, and then she woke them and said i'm right here <laughs> <laughs> good times yeah, yeah. All right thanks keisha it was nice meeting you well Corey, 
we appreciate your time. The Veterans Breakfast Club thanks you for sharing your story. I thank you for sharing your story. Um, and it's a pleasure to have known you and to know you to this day. The pleasure to have known you as well, okay. Becky. Yeah. I, I, I miss all you guys so much. I really do. Well, hopefully we can plan a reunion someday. I want to. I really do. I really want to see everybody. Okay. I want to see everybody. All right. Well, thank you. And you have a great holiday. And we appreciate your time. Thank you for asking me to do this. It was, it was wonderful. And I appreciate it.